In this video, I'm going to explain um, what the GCSE extended writing task is in the French, French and Spanish exams and how you can um, cope with them. So the extended writing task is longer than the short writing task. So the short writing task um, was 80 to 90 words in length. The extended writing task gives you a guideline of 130 to 150 words. Um, and there's also a few more marks available. So for the short writing piece, it was 20 marks. For this one, it's 28 marks. Now, how it's basically assessed is very basically the same. Um, the marks are broken into two sections, but this time you get 16 marks for the content and communication, and you have 12 marks available for your language and accuracy. So it's a very similar um, feat that you're having to complete just like the short one, but this time it's all about giving more detail, so there are more marks available. So uh, I'll first talk you through a French example, then I'll move on to Spanish. Uh, can I also request that you first watch my video called GCSE Short Writing Task, because um, I'm not going to repeat a lot of the information I already said in the first video. Right, so kicking off with the French um, extended writing task. So, um, once again, just like the short piece, you get a title and a picture, which is going to give you a little bit of context. So we've got Les Fêtes Traditionnelles, um, traditional festivals, um, and a small rubric telling you what you've got to do. Um, so it says, you've read an article in a magazine about uh, celebrations in France. Write an article for this French magazine um, to interest its readers in a uh, festival from your country. Vous devez faire référence. Uh, you must make reference to the following points. Once again, you will be given four bullet points. You absolutely must cover all four bullet points. Otherwise, you will drastically reduce your mark. This time, though, you've got a 130 and 150 word um, limit guideline to play with. So if we look at the uh, bullet points, comment on célèbre cette fête chez vous? How we celebrate or people celebrate this festival um, where you are. This is present tense. Second bullet point, ce que vous avez aimé la dernière fois que vous avez célébré cette fête. What you liked the last time that you celebrated this festival. This is past tense. Thirdly, votre opinion sur l'importance des fêtes traditionnelles. Your opinion on the importance of traditional festivals. So a present tense opinion section. And finally, vos projets pour une autre fête dans le futur. Your plans for a, another festival uh, in the future. And it says, justify your ideas and your opinions. So, um, this is very similar to the first short writing task. You will always need to make reference to present, past and future events and give opinions. But because you've got more words to play with, you've also got scope to go a bit above and beyond. So, if we think about the GCSE, to get a passing grade, um, so a four or a five, you need to demonstrate you can use uh, present, past and future. To secure um, a grade higher than that, you need to show you can use additional tenses. So think of it as a step ladder. You must, you can't skip any rungs. You must put your present, past, future first and then build on that. You can't simply write an entire piece in the conditional without any present, past or future. So make sure you've got present, past and future and then include some extras. So for example, with this one about uh, traditional festivals. Um, you could easily include a conditional tense verb in the fourth bullet point. So your project, your plans, sorry, for a, um, another festival in the future. I might write something saying that um, next Christmas I am going to spend it with my grandparents, um, and that's the future tense. But then I could add a final line saying, oh, if I had the choice, I would like to spend um, Christmas in Barbados. So you've got more scope to, to show off, basically. You must have present, past and future, but add anything extra uh, to try and show off and get higher range of language mark. Um, just like the short writing piece, uh, for this one, if you're aiming for a solid answer, so a reasonable grade, then we must make sure we've got present, past and future tense within there. Um, and some opinions and some connectives and some frequency words, uh, sequences, etc. But to try and boost your uh, range of language mark in particular, we need to show variety of language. So not just saying je all the time, but sometimes using il, elle or nous. Maybe using some fancy grammar, such as il faut, it is necessary, plus an infinitive. More variety of opinions, à mon avis, je crois, je pense que... Um, some variants of connecting words, such as car, donc, alors, puisque, quand, pourtant. Um, and even some relative pronouns, such as avec mes parents qui habitent, with my grandparents who live, wherever they live. 
And over the top, we've got present, past, future, but some additional tenses as well. Maybe imperfect, maybe conditional. Maybe use venir de, je viens de fêter, I have just celebrated. Um, you could use some comparatives, some superlatives, some pronouns. For example, uh, j'en mange trois, I eat three of them. Or on en mange tous les ans, we eat some of it every year. So it's really about just showing off a variety of language. And here's a really good example which would score um, full marks. So, um, have uh, pause the video and have a little read through this and then press play when you're ready to hear my comments on it. Okay, so um, this piece is really impressive because it's got a good variety of verbs and it covers all of the, the bullet points in the task. So the first section is talking about having just um, celebrated Easter with family, saying it's one of their favourite festivals, um, that, that there's on a, the Easter Sunday they give each other chocolate eggs and then they eat together. Um, we prepare um, roasted lamb with vegetables followed by fruit tart and if the after the meal if the weather's good they go for a walk together otherwise they play board games or they regard uh, they regard they watch a good film on the television and the next section is talking about the previous um well this year but talking about the past tense so uh, my mother went to the church um she stayed at home no i stayed at home sorry i helped my dad prepare the lunch it was really good. I really enjoyed spending time with my grandparents and I um, loved playing Scrabble because I won. So lots of past tense verbs. Then we've got the opinion bullet point. Uh, in my opinion, it's important to celebrate traditional festivals because it's the opportunity to be with family and to relax a little bit. And that's a really nice use there of a, um, with de se détendre, using a reflexive verb um, in its infinitive form. Um, so de se détendre in order to uh, relax a little bit. And then the final bullet point, we've got the future tense. Je vais fêter Noël. I'm going to celebrate Christmas. Ça va être génial. It is going to be great. So we've got a good range of tenses in here. We've got present, past, future, and we've got imperfect in the third, uh, second paragraph with sete. It was very good. Um, and we've got a good range of connecting words like puisque and some nice uh, vocab touches as well, such as des jeux de société. So let's now have a look at an extended writing task in Spanish. So um, we, they always give you the title, so you know which topic area you're dealing with. So in this one, we've got la tecnología, and it gives you a quick rubric telling you um, basically what it's about. So it says you're a fan of technology, and um, you're going to write an article to inform the readers of a Spanish magazine about the importance of technology. Debe. Now, this is in bold for a reason, because you must mention, um, cover the following four bullet points. Just like the short writing task, you've got four bullet points and you must, must, must cover all of them. If you don't, then you've got a major problem on your hands. Um, the bullet points, again, you're not going to know exactly what the topic is, but it's pretty predictable in what tenses it will use. Just like the short writing task, it will definitely include present, past and future. So in this example, the first bullet point, ¿Cómo usa su móvil todos los días? How you use your mobile every day. That's present tense. The second bullet point um, is saying how you used social media uh, last week. Past tense. The third bullet point, a small inconvenience of technology. So this is a present tense opinion. Um, and the fourth bullet point, um, how um, going to use technology in school next week. So this is future tense and it tells you to justify your ideas and your opinions. So here we've got present, past and future bullet points, plus a bullet point which is present tense, but in really encouraging you to give opinions in the present tense. Now the word limit this time, or the word guideline I should say, is 130 to 150 words. So you've got more um, scope to play with. So once again, you've got to make sure you talk about present, past, future events, just like the short writing task. Uh, think of it like rungs of a ladder, you must address those first but you've got more wiggle room then to talk about, um, you include some other tenses um, and to really show off a variety of structures. So here are some things you could possibly include. So if you're aiming for a solid answer, we absolutely need um, references to present, past and future. And just like for the short writing piece, include a few examples of each um, verb in each tense, because if um, you only include one and you misconjugate it, then you won't get credit for using that tense. So try and use a few. We need to include uh, opinions, reasons, connecting words, qualifiers, etc. But this uh, writing task, the extended task, which is in the higher paper, is really about showing off. So this is about really including some fancy features, things like comparatives, 
such as es más barato que, it's uh, cheaper than, um, exclamations, using more impressive connecting words, using some um, additional negatives. So maybe not um, simply no, but using nunca or ni ni, using para and an infinitive in order in order to say, in order to, para ir a un concierto, in order to go to a concert. And if you're aiming for the top, then we need to try and include some slightly unusual verbs, um, such as apoyar, escoger, conocerse, llevarse, divertirse, using a variety of tenses, so maybe present tense with some present uh, continuous, such as estoy hablando, I am talking, using a variety of opinions and reasons, um, maybe even some uh, interesting phrases such as es una perdida de tiempo, uh, it's a waste of time, or en mi opinión es una relación amor-odio, in my opinion it's a love-hate relationship. So it's really about showing off a variety and making your work stand out from the crowd. So here's an example uh, which would score really high marks. Um, the first paragraph uh, is talking about um, how much they like technology and they're a fan of their mobile, um, particularly because it helps them to stay organised and download music, uh, use it every day to listen to music. It's more, uh, really practical when I'm doing um, stuff at home or if I'm waiting for a bus in the morning. I never get bored if I've got my music. Um, I also use it to send messages to my friends and my family. So that's a lot of present tense verbs. In the second paragraph, and they start talking about um, social networks, that they're not just useful um, you know, for killing a bit of time, but also for staying in contact with family and friends. And last week, I used Facebook in order to look and uh, share information with my friends for a history project. Um, and it also helps you do your homework. So here we've got some opinions, and we've also got um, a past tense verb as well with the uze. The third section is giving uh, opinions again and talking about an inconvenience of technology. So we've got um, some present tense verbs again. So a small inconvenience of technology is that it depends on um, electricity. So if you have a power cut, it can result in um, it being a waste of time. Um, in addition, the history teacher uh, has a, a love-hate relationship with technology and says that uh, reading a screen is um, bad because it tires out your eyes. So not only your opinion, but giving someone else's opinion can be worthwhile as well. And then finally, the final bullet point. In my opinion, it's not. It, 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 it is um, not if. Sorry, it is not possible to imagine life at school without the internet. Technology is kind of all around everybody, and it allows them to um, personalize their learning. And the next week, we're going to uh, create our own web page. Uh, long live technology. So we've got a massive um, variety of vocab and structures in this piece. We've got lots of different tenses as well, which makes it a really impressive extended writing piece.